Hello, my name is Diane Diaddy. Today I would like to present to you a case report about a little cat called Pancho. This film is intended for continuing professional development for veterinary surgeons and for um, helping undergraduate veterinary students in learning uh, their skills. This film is not a replacement for proper veterinary advice. If you have a sick cat, please consult a qualified veterinary surgeon. Here's a photo of Pancho showing what a handsome little cat he is. Um, he was referred to me and to the French veterinary osteopath Veronique Zanoni, whose website can be found at verozeno.vetosteo.eu in July 2009 as a cat with non-effusive FIP. He was already undergoing treatment for FIP. FIP, feline infectious peritonitis, is an important cause of death in cats, especially pedigree or purebred cats and cats from rescue shelters. FIP has two main presentations, effusive or wet FIP and non-effusive or dry FIP. Most people find me when their cat has been diagnosed with FIP and they come to me to ask what is the latest development on FIP treatment. I always start out by asking on what basis was FIP diagnosed because I find that over 80% of cases referred to me turn out not to have FIP but to have something else. FIP is extremely difficult to diagnose in life. There is no single diagnostic test other than histopathology, in other words post-mortem, although some test manufacturers and laboratories claim otherwise and mislabel their tests, FIP tests. These so-called FIP tests are actually tests for the virus, feline coronavirus, which causes FIP. They detect the RNA of the virus or antibodies to the virus, so they're not FIP tests, they're coronavirus tests. In the absence of an FIP test, I use this diagnostic algorithm to diagnose FIP. It's available for as a free download from www.catvirus.com, my website. A variation of my catvirus.com algorithm was adopted by the European Advisory Board of Cat Disease and published last year in the Journal of Feline Medicine and Surgery. If you're new to diagnosing FIP, you might like to download this diagnostic worksheet from catvirus.com and work through it along with me during this case report. The algorithm looks a bit scary at first, but as you work with me through the different steps, you'll soon see that it's really quite simple. Step one is the taking the cat's history and deciding whether or not it's congruent with the diagnosis of FIP. For the cat to have feline infectious peritonitis, there must be some opportunity in his or her history to have become infected with feline coronavirus. Cats with FIP usually have a history of having come recently from a multi-cat environment, such as a shelter or a breeding cattery. In addition to having had to have become infected with feline coronavirus at some point, the cat usually has a history of stress. That history can be very recent in previous three or four weeks with wet FIP or it can be weeks to months with dry FIP. So let's have a look at how our case fits into this uh, first step of the FIP diagnostic algorithm. Pancho does not have a recent history of being in a multi-cat environment. He's a five-year-old cat from a single cat household. So that's a cross against the first parameter of step one of the algorithm. So let's look at other opportunities to have become infected with coronavirus. I asked his guardian, did she get a new kitten recently? Or has Pancho been put into a boarding cattery recently? And her answer was no. So that's a cross against the second parameter in step one of the uh, diagnostic algorithm. However, when I asked about step three, had he any recent history of stress, I learned that the dog had undergone surgery in 2008 and that the cat had felt stressed by that event. So we have one 
a tick and two crosses at this stage. Though you would never diagnose or rule out FIP just on the basis of history. So let's proceed to step two. Step two is the clinical examination and in the absence of an effusion we'd be thinking about non-effusive FIP in Pancho's case. So we'll be going down the right side of the diagnostic algorithm. We can blank out the left side as not being relevant uh, in this case. Step two in diagnosing FIP is to look at the clinical signs to do a clinical examination. Pancho had been presented to his referring veterinary surgeon because his personality had altered and he had bouts of lethargy um, and head shaking especially after jumping down from a chair. In dry FIP you would expect to have some or all of the following clinical signs. The cat would be dull, not eating well and would usually have lost weight. There is a persistent moderate pyrexia, enlarged mesenteric lymph node and in most cases intraocular signs. A number of cats also have icterus or jaundice and neurological signs. So which of these signs did Pancho exhibit? Well he certainly wasn't dull, he was a feisty little guy. He had no history of anorexia and um, you can see that he's not skinny. His guardian said there was no sign of weight loss. On the day of examination he had a temperature of 39.4 which is a bit raised so we come to the first tick in our um, examination. However it was a very hot day and I don't know whether his pyrexia was persistent. There was no history of uh, pyrexia being recorded previously. Unbelievably I forgot to examine the lymph node, the mesenteric lymph node, so I don't know whether that was enlarged or not. I have to confess up front that I'm not a, a trained veterinary ophthalmologist. I haven't specialised. Um, I did an ophthalmological examination of him and was unable to find any uh, intraocular signs that I would associate with dry FIP. I don't know if you can see from this photograph that there is no sign of anisocoria, keratic precipitates, corneal edema or uveitis uh, in Pancho's eyes. Examination of his mucous membrane showed that he was not icteric. Pancho had no history of fits or seizures and during clinical examination he walked perfectly normally with no sign of ataxia and he had no nystagmus. However, his history was one of having a slightly different personality, of having head shaking, and during clinical examination I felt that his hopping and placing and menace reflex were slower on the right than on the left, which was an observation Veronique agreed with. So by the end of step two, we've drawn a blank with most of the signs that we would expect for a dry FIP cat. And we've only put ticks on two vague clinical signs so far. Let's have a look at step three and see if that will shed any more light on this case. So step three is taking the blood sample which we will submit for haematology and biochemistry. If the hematocrit is greater than 30 then FIP is unlikely. A hematocrit of less than 30, in other words the cat is anemic, doesn't mean the cat has FIP, just that FIP is possible and in addition you would expect that anemia to be non-regenerative. Cats with FIP are usually lymphopenic so a normal lymphocyte count would tend to indicate that FIP was unlikely whereas lymphopenia would again mean that FIP was possible but not certain. The majority of cats with dry FIP are hypergammaglobulinemic so a normal uh, globulin level would rule out FIP, whereas a raised globulin level would indicate that FIP was possible. You can work out the albumin globulin ratio by dividing the albumin by the globulin. If the ratio is greater than 0.8, then FIP is pretty much ruled out, whereas if it's less than 0.7, then FIP remains a possibility. Cats with dry FIP often have a raised bilirubin often in the absence of um, any other liver parameters being raised. 
So a normal bilirubin count would tend to count against FIP being a diagnosis. Now let's put in the figures for Pancho's blood sample. His hematocrit is 33.1%, so he's not anemic. His lymphocyte count is 1.75 times 10 to the 9 per litre, so he's not lymphopenic, and his globulin levels are normal at 42 grams per litre. Having a normal globulin level, his albumin to globulin ratio is 0.88, which pretty much on its own rules out FIP. Cats with non-effusive FIP usually have a raised bilirubin level, even in the absence of raised AP, AST or ALT. So with a normal bilirubin level, this again looks like Pancha does not have FIP. You'll notice that it's only now, at the end of stage 3, that I reach for the coronavirus antibody test. If Pancho were seropositive, that would only mean that FIP were possible. It wouldn't say that he did have FIP. If he were seronegative, on the other hand, it would pretty much rule out uh, FIP. Pancho was feline coronavirus antibody seronegative. So really there was absolutely no evidence that he was a cat with feline infectious peritonitis. So you might find yourself asking this question, why was he diagnosed with FIP? Well, we need to go back to his records. He had a history of having a positive RT-PCR on his CSF. So step four of the uh, diagnostic algorithm had been performed before the other steps. Pancho had also had an MRI, um, which was normal. It showed no uh, sign of hydrocephalus or contrast enhancement around the third or fourth ventricles. Another specialist laboratory test that would have been useful would have been alpha-1 acid glycoprotein. Um, a normal result would have ruled out FIP. But since we already had enough to rule out FIP, we didn't do an AGP test. Coronavirus RT-PCR should never be done on CSF in the diagnosis of FIP. It is frequently negative in cases that have FIP and frequently positive in cats that do not. So we answered our initial question, does Pancho have non-effusive FIP, by saying no. Were we right? Let's have a look at Pancho in September of 2010. Here he is walking round the rim of a flower bowl, hardly the actions of a cat with neurological FIP. So a happy ending for Pancho. Veterinary osteopath Veronique Zanoni and I concluded that Pancho had experienced some trauma to the head or neck at some point. I took Pancho off his prednisolone treatment for FIP gradually and my colleague Veronique treated him with veterinary osteopathy. Pancho is alive and well 14 months after our consultation with him. I'd like to finish by thanking Pancho and his human being Daniel Merian for allowing his story to be used to help others. I'm grateful to Veronique for involving me in this case and to Benedetta Giannini of Almo Nature for sponsoring this case report and for translating the algorithm into Italian. For news of my next FIP Diagnosis Masterclass, contact improvecpd.com or look on my homepage at catvirus.com for the next date. I hope you found this case report useful and interesting. For more information on FIP, visit my website catvirus.com. This is Diane Diadi praying for an end to animal suffering. Bye-bye.